what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here um i'm just going to review the possession of hannah grace today i just got out of the theater seeing it the possession of hannah grace stars shay mitchell gray damon kirby johnson nick thune lewis hertham and Stana katik now this movie in particular um i didn't really have an I didn't really plan on seeing this movie. This was kind of just like a last minute decision on my end because I wanted to see some horror movie before the year ended. And I know there's not a lot of other good horror films or anything I'm expecting before the year ended. So I wanted to go see The Possession of Hannah Grace to hop and say for there being no more horror movies that I actually had an interest in seeing before the year ended. Basically what this film is doing is it's following a cop who has just gotten out of like she was in rehab or something for due to an incident that occurred on the job that she never recovered from. She kind of is, is suffering from PTSD. Uh, she's into drugs. She's a former alcoholic. She had an addiction issue. She's just recovering from this stuff. She relapses at times and now she's taking on the position of a night shift at a, a graveyard shift in the, I think it's at a Boston hospital in the morgue department. Uh, but while she's there, she gets, she receives a body drop off that ends up being and ends up leading to a night of terror surrounding what actually happened to the person in this case hannah grace what is going on here because the main the main selling point for this movie was the fact that this is what ends up happening after an exorcism now i don't not know i the reason why i cannot really say that this movie was all that bad is because while yes it's very unoriginal if you if you've seen movies like the autopsy of jane doe you'll understand what i'm talking about but this movie isn't necessarily just an overall crap movie it's more so just that it suffers from its lack of originality its lack of offering anything new to the genre of demons and the supernatural uh lackluster performances by certain people some of the kills in the movie when we get them they're just you don't care about anyone that dies in the movie like the film offers nothing for you to care about anyone that you have on screen and i know that's ultimately how a lot of horror movies are today because halloween the the new halloween had a few throwaway characters that you really didn't care who lived or died but at least that movie established some some chemistry between certain characters and we got to see them fleshed out in more ways than one this movie you have a collection of characters that are just there for supporting roles behind shay mitchell's leading role as megan megan reed they offer nothing to the overall narrative there's one character who plays her former boyfriend gray damon plays andrew kurtz andrew is uh he's recently moved out of her home he visits her like on the second night of the job after she after he realizes that she might have stolen some medication pills and he doesn't want her relapsing he's concerned about her well-being and her relapsing I think that might have what actually led to their break of her addiction problem. This movie, not only is it, it's not really bad. It's just so unoriginal, so uninspired. It lacks anything creatively fresh. It's not bringing anything new to the table. It's just rehashing a bunch of ideas that other films have already done. And I know that's ultimately what a movie is going to, some movies are just going to be that, they're going to be rehashes, but I feel like this movie legitimately set out to not be original at all. They wanted to just take elements from certain movies and then just title this movie something else entirely different because there's elements, there's a lot of elements that were in regards to uh, the autopsy of Jane Doe in here. This, the whole concept screams the autopsy of Jane Doe. So if you want to actually see something that's more well crafted and has a better overall experience i would say go watch the autopsy of jane doe and to skip the possession of hannah grace uh there are a few things that don't make sense in the movie such as how there's a sequence where because a lot of stuff in the movie it's as if they want the audience to not know certain things until the end but then they're highlighted in a way in the movie that anyone who's watching with their mind and their brain fu functioning is going to be able to just predict every little thing that's about to happen because there's it seems so very formulaic there's not a lot going on either in regards to like just why hannah grace and i just wish like the only real connection hannah grace even has to the main character here uh megan reed 
is that she's basically just a pawn for Megan Reed to get some redemption because she failed to take action once before in her life and that's what led to her relapsing. Uh, in the in the end of the movie, we kind of just have a moment where she does something and she doesn't have, she doesn't experience the same thing that occurred that led to her not being a cop anymore and her ending up at the morgue night shift at this local hospital. That's really the only reason why Hannah Grace exists here. I, I thought the movie was going to be about Hannah Grace. So the movie in itself isn't even about Hannah Grace or her possession. It's more about uh, Megan Reed's character played by Shay Mitchell overcoming her previous trauma in, that occurred from uh, a past experience when she was a former cop or when she was a cop. Shay Mitchell she's a phenom she's not a phenomenal actor no one in this movie really does a solid job besides her everyone else gives subpar acting at best shay mitchell she's always been good she if you're familiar with shay mitchell you probably might recognize her uh, as emily from pretty little liars she didn't do a bad job in the movie it's just that this movie is so formulaic it's offering nothing new and her performance isn't enough to just hold this movie up because it's ultimately a mess but like I said there's a few things that make no sense I'm trying to avoid spoilers because I'm going to do a spoiler review in the future once in a few coming weeks once I feel like everyone has seen the movie uh, let me know what you guys thought about the possession of Hannah Grace down in the comment section below if you have seen it if you haven't already subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video also in the description I'll have links to all my social media accounts on my Facebook Twitter and Instagram you can message me there to let me know what movies you would like me to review in the future uh, if I were to rate this on a scale of 1 to 10, I would honestly give it a 5.5 only because of Shay Mitchell's performance. Uh, some of the like the mannerisms and the cinematography, I thought that was well done. And the mannerisms of Hannah Grace when her body is mobile, I thought that was well done. Uh, and just the fact that the movie itself was not, it just wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't as original as you would expect. I didn't expect it to be very original, but it just wasn't very good at the end of the day. It's not overall bad. That's why I'm going to give it a 5.5 out of 10. Let me, got, let me know what you guys thought about the film if you've seen it down in the comment section below. Also in the description, I'll have links to my most recent article that I have had published on Screen Rant. I now write for Screen Rant. Uh, just some news on the future of A Quiet Place and what a sequel could potentially look like and how it will be different from the original. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.